so annoying. Aren't you going to say hello to people? Hi, guys. Hello, Rebecca, Kate. You don't have a middle name. It's not fair. It's not fair? Um, you don't... I don't think anyone in your family has a middle name. So you could be called too tall for your weight, Kate. I could. I could. You could. I was going to be Your called... mum never called you that? No. She was too busy calling you other names. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like a coat. A coat. <laughs> yeah, no, I was, I was actually just going to be called Kate before they settled on Rebecca. Kate. Yeah. Kate. I think Kate suits you better. Yeah, I think it does too. You look like a Kate. <laughs> a coat. <laughs> coat. <laughs> I could be Kate the coat. Kate, Kate the coat. Oh my God! If you don't know what coat stands for, look go, it up. Go, go back to one of our previous podcasts. <laughs> it's not in-house jokes anymore. It's an outhouse no, joke. Yeah. That said. And you saw, thought it was so funny on the news the other night that the presenter's last name was Coat. coat. <laughs> You also thought it was funny on the news when they reported that a lady fell down at Robbie Williams and died. No, it wasn't a lady. It was like an 80-year-old lady. You laughed. Well, there was a... It sounds really... So, you laugh at bad things. I know. I've seen you do it. I laughed at people being stuck at Burning Man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you idiot. Um, no, what it, it was... I, it was a visual. <laughs> the visual. Yeah, of Robbie Williams after listening to my wife watch his. We, I, the way I've set my house up is where my office is. It's fully open to our lounge room, and that's where my wife will watch TV at night. We can talk together, or I can ignore her and she can talk. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, and she, she booked tickets to see Robbie Williams, and, want, and I said, well, there's a, some type of, um, sorry about the wind, uh, some type of documentary on him on Netflix, and I put it on for her. And after three minutes, it was, Oh my God, <laughs> you're sucking that you're a multimillionaire and you're super mm -hmm. famous, but yeah. your album flopped. Your first solo album went nowhere because it was crap. <laughs> and then, um, then three quarters of the thing, he's sucking about everything. Oh, America doesn't like me. Nobody will buy my records in America. You're a multimillionaire. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I'm just thinking of him turning up to Australia and playing at the concert and it's full of 80-year-old ladies throwing their big chundies at him. And my picture was her throwing her oh, chundies and because she's so old she lost her balance and fell down the stairs oh, and died. And that's why you thought it was funny. Yeah, I had a visual. A visual. It was a visual that came into my head of... Well, I guess that's why I laughed at the at the thing at Burning Man because all I could picture was all these rich influencers in their massive RVs with sh actual proper shelter and showers and toilets and stuff. Like, oh no, it's raining! <laughs> <laughs> it's muddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, my shoes are going to get muddy on them. That's why I thought it was funny. I, what, but the people that were in the tent said that looked horrible. I felt really sorry for them. I was just laughing at the influencers crying about the mud. Crying about the mud. But then I heard from people that it actually went that it actually wasn't really that mad. Well, wasn't it just bad the last day or two days? Um, wasn't it a very short period that it was actually bad? I think so. But yeah, they said that the media hyped it up. No, but uh, no, but that's when the rain didn't happen till the last day uh, yeah. or two days. So yeah, it was still bad, and they had to ship food in and helicopter yeah. water in. But they but said the, it wasn't a lot of it was bad. dry, and I think they said that there's a massive downpour coming in. You know, they were too stoned to leave, so <laughs> they put up with it. <gasps> yeah, some of the influencers had already left. Right. So I checked out two of the influencers I know. Well, not influencers, they're stars I know. That, stars. That were there and they had left the day before the uh, rain came down. Deranes are here. Deranes. So today Peter is trying to fix his jammed film camera. Oh, uh, no, the camera's fine. It's the film uh, back. Film back. It's trying it's to. So scan. annoying because it looks really good. Well, Hasselblad before it was taken over by China, um, <coughs> it was anything that you bought was could they design it so it could work on new models or work on old models. So if the, this is an old back, but this can still go on my. 
I've got a 503 CX, I think it is, which is one of, uh, one of the later film cameras. Mm. And this is based off one of the sort of 1954 age cameras. But they designed the new camera still to take this back. But there's a couple of little quirks about it. Like one of them, you put your film on, you put it all together, you wind it, and it goes click and it's ready to shoot. And it'll say one in that little hole, like this says one. Right. With this, you put your film in, you wind it, but you've got to open the back door and wait till you see a number one. You you know, I can its see back a number door. one, wind, so turn it slightly the opposite way, and then it goes. That's why I can show you. I had to do it. I worked out how to do this. So, and then when it does, when it does this, click. Right? It then would put a number one in there. It's already got a one there. I know. This is my problem. Oh. Because I was shooting with this and I've wound, it's got <clears throat> like that's the end. Mm. And it felt a bit weird. It didn't feel like a proper end. But oh, it's done. And okay. I've gone this just to wind it back all the rest of it to the rest of the, onto the rest of this. And it got really stiff. And I turned it back the other way and went click and number one came up and now I can't open it. Mm. And so far YouTube has failed me. Not YouTube. YouTube's all, I always mm. find it, I know I'm anti-YouTube. I always find it, well. What? Well, they're so woke. They are. Mm. It was really fun, it's really good. They're being, they sent out a survey the other day and their questions were amazing. They left the door open so much for me. Their back door open? Sorry? You're talking about? No, not the back door of this. I'm talking their back door. Um, yeah, they left it, like normally mm. when you do surveys, they answer the questions as, how awesome are we? Mm. Not a were we awesome. It's just how awesome mm -hmm. are we? Oh, the shirts are... Well, I jam shirts into our roller door to stop it rattling and over <laughs> the shoot with Rara and us doing a podcast, they're slowly falling out. One left. There's one left, is there? Yes. We used to have to well, like, they used to do a survey like that at Telstra when I worked there. And they'd said, and it was really funny, like, they'd, I don't know if they do it, did they do it once a year? I might have done it once a year. Um, it was for the was employee survey, something or other, I don't know. And they'd tell all of the employees, this, like, we, we all had to take it, it was compulsory, and this survey is anonymous, so you can tell us how you really feel. So to, to log on, you've each been emailed a number, a code number thing, it's all been emailed to you, so enter that, and then you take the anonymous survey. Um, how anonymous is it if you guys have access to the numbers that everyone was sent? <laughs> it's anonymous because the rest of the world doesn't know. It's, no, it's just, it was just employees going back to it. was like asking about management and stuff. Oh, the guys, oh well, you, yeah, of course you're not anonymous. <laughs> but they would make, give so you this So you do your survey and someone would go, Rebecca Kate. <laughs> Oops, they that gave, wasn't very anonymous. I, I remember one year they got... <laughs> ripped a new one and then ripped a new one <laughs> ripped a new one someone commented about yes. our ripped a new one oh, that's, it's such a good phrase um, Rip, ripped a new one ripped a, a ripped new, a new what butthole butthole um the next year what the was questions wrong with their old one? it was old and crusty was it old and crusty was it broken yeah broken but then the next year the next year all the questions were like how awesome are we please tell us how great, great we are, we are. <laughs> Because they didn't like well, the year yeah. that they, got from, they left the door open. Yeah, there was one, and I was uh, somewhere. And I don't. The surveys are, they always take too much of my time. I get no benefit out of it. Mm. If they were confident in what they were doing, they don't need to ask for a survey. Yeah. Like if they believe, if they have said this is the best service we can offer, you don't need to give a survey because if you can't offer any better, mm. right? So if everyone says that the, the, your service was shit, but. Oh, well, that's the best we can offer. What's the use of having a survey? Well, we, I remember when I first started, we, I used to send out surveys at the end of workshops because that's what I was trained to do by your previous assistant. Yeah, but I've never thought that I was amazing. I'm always, I can do something better. Yeah. And also, some people, and we found that out, some people are too scared to say anything yeah, well, to was, your face. That was 100% anonymous, so those surveys. Yeah, 100 There wasn't anonymous. a little code so number. We had no idea who <laughs> was no it. There was no code number. Um, but yeah, and we, it wasn't like a questionnaire tick this box, was it? It was just, um, yeah, no, do you no, have it was, any feedback? 
Yeah, and it was like asking questions about like what. Yeah, it was just it just had like little boxes and questions about what did you think of this? What did you think of this? What did you think? Oh yeah, but they weren't. What did you think of this? Did you find it was amazing? Yeah, no. Or was it incredibly good and you loved what we did? <laughs> or was it so insightful? Yeah. Or was only positive answers, nothing negative? Yeah, no, it was. It wasn't that. It was like asking how we found certain aspects of the web. We don't do that anymore. Yeah, but I still like getting feedback though. Yeah, I still prefer. But we don't do that anymore. We well, can if you want. You're the boss. I just work here. I just I found that people weren't really filling them out too much. And well, I know I wouldn't have. Yeah, I know. I that's... can't write. <laughs> well, that's why I stopped. You cause... wouldn't be able to read to it. If I had filled out with a pen, you would not. And most people are saying these days, think... so little people actually yeah. write. People don't have time. Like... No, but they don't actually write, so the handwriting has gone to, like, we all look like doctors. <laughs> I, I, actually, I have nice handwriting. Oh, uh, actually, do you? <laughs> the wedding Jared and I went to the other week. Oh, and... did you sign the papers because nobody else could write <laughs> no. nicely? I had to write on the card. It's... Jared's work friend, and he's like, can you write on the card? Your handwriting's nicer than mine. <laughs> I don't know. I got something off my dad. I don't know. But you see, dad's very, very first... I think the first trade or the first skill... What are you looking at? Just checking. His first skill or first whatever he passed was electrical draftsman. What's that? So when you've got something electrical, someone who draws up the electrical oh. plan for right. inside... And he was, um, he was on the team, they, I can't remember who he worked for, but they were working for, out at Essendon Airport and they designed the air conditioning system for the first radar at Essendon, their first Ooh. radar in Australia. Wow. Didn't realise he was so fancy. But, so he was very good. Well, my grandfather was an excellent sketcher. Sketch. But... Um, I noticed with all of Dad's writing, so I've got all these old school books, he always had capital first letter of every word. It's not grammatically correct. I know, but that's... <laughs> every word would be capital first letter, lowercase the rest. Capital mm. first... And, and I wondered where I got it from. Do you so write I mean, like that? Yeah, I've got to force myself not to when I'm <laughs> typing. For some reason, I even type like that. <laughs> what? I know I'm forever going, why am I doing this? <laughs> Got it from your papa. But then, well, no, the difference is, then I realised he didn't, he did a capital for everything, but he made the, the first letter bigger. He only ever wrote in capitals. He didn't write script. Oh, right. So he used to write script when he was young, but yeah. in, in his drawings, everything was, everything was capital, but the first letter was larger than the rest of them. I think my dad writes all in capitals. Yeah. But, like, yeah, yeah. Don't get me to write in script. You you can't even read me in capitals. The script it's going to be scriptalicious. This is. I might have to. Wonder if. How do we get talking about handwriting? How? <laughs> because Put you're it. praising yourself about how good Praise, you are. I'm not. I'm picking but, cat hair. Wait, don't get ragged, old cat. It when... really annoys me. All I want to do is every morning when you come in. In fact. In future, what I'm going to do is say, Beck, go out the back, take it off, throw it out, let me clean it, then you can wear it, because all day it bugs living Christ out of me. I would, with this not on you, I could clean it perfectly. While it's on you, I can't. The, it does the, diddly the, squat. The NFTs get in the way. <laughs> um, I'm just constantly... It's, it's, I don't know what it is. It's like I have psoriasis, which just on one side of my head, mm. and... All I have to do is scratch it and it's like dandruff pouring out. The only comes one side but always ends up over everywhere. Mm. And there was a photographer from many years ago that a very, very technical, he was a technical photographer, he looked mainly um, commercial corporate work. So he either did still life of um, machinery and machinery parts, like that literally strip a machine down, he'd photograph every part perfectly. Or he would be, he was in Papua New Guinea photographing a whole new pipeline. And he had to photograph every single join in the pipe, then some aerials of what before it got filled in and all of this stuff. Incredibly skilled technical photographer. I wonder if he said cool, cool, cool while he was taking photos of the pipes. No, this, <laughs> unfortunately, he's passed. Um, but I'll never forget, but the first year I had to enter the competition because I was a member. 
So I've entered into the Victoria one and I was a bit sort of didn't know how things went so I went and watched the judging and saw the judging happening and we got these four or six judges standing there and the odd judge would comment but if the judges, if there was one judge's score too far left or right of the average, they would ask them to talk or that person could say, I would like a re-vote, and that person got to say why his score was so low or why it was so high compared to everybody else. Right. And everybody else would re-look at the picture and then re-judge. And whenever it happened with me, I just put the same score down because I don't care what you say, mm -hmm. I've judged up basically on what I saw. Yeah. But you'd see everyone would change their score. <laughs> So I'll never forget just some of this stuff that was happening. I was watching, yeah, it's an all right pitch. It's nothing it's fancy. Nice. <laughs> it's nice. And most people voted it as it's nice, <laughs> which is like a bronze. Yeah. It used to be there's a set number and it was like um, at commercial quality. Nice. Which means it was nice. If it was commer co commercial, uh, good enough to be classed as a commercial quality picture that you should charge for. Yeah. And then you had your, that was a bronze sort of area, then you had your silver, uh, sorry, yeah, bronze, then you had silver, then you had gold, then you had top. So this picture's come up and it was just sitting at, it's nice. And <laughs> one of the people was sort of like 10 points higher. So he got an automatic dispute. If you're more than 10 points out higher than the average, it's automatic, you have to talk about it. So he's got up and he's on, and then everybody point, point, voted 10 points higher. Why? Because they looked at it the way he said to look at it, which was through his eyes, not their eyes. So ridiculous. And so he is. This is why I'm anti this stuff. Anti camera. So anyway, he, this particular person was quite often on. Is either a chairman who would say we Pipe need photographer. Yeah, this is this photographer okay, guy, yeah. um, or he'd be on the judging. He was mainly judging stuff like he never did wedding snap because it was just not so far different to what he's used to. But he'd do like commercial things like that, and because I was in commercial and fashion, and back when I first in Victoria they had commercial and fashion together. For the nationals, like the whole of Australia, they had separate categories. So it's so different yeah, style they, of. Why do they put them together? That's well, they didn't have enough entries. Oh, that's, that's chalk and cheese, though. I know, but anyway. So I'm in there, and one of my pictures came up, and it's a picture of the that Shea Lounge we've got sitting over there. Oh yeah. Oh, that could be our photo at the end, both of us sitting on that, <laughs> so they can see the Shea Lounge. Okay. <laughs> Shea, whatever they call it. Chase? Is it, is it called it? Is it Chase? I don't know. I call it Shay Lounge. <laughs> Chase had another one. <laughs> um, it doesn't have any tattoos. So it was a, a model on there in, because this was a commercial shoot I did for a lingerie company, mm -hmm. and she was on there with the lingerie on. She had high heels. She was sort of wider leg, leaning down. Oh, I think I know And she the had shot. Um, stockings and a garter belt. I know the shot, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the shot. Dark hair, yes. pin up issue. Yeah, 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 yeah. And everybody has voted it. High, it's gone in for you know high silver, silver distinctions, except his vote, and it was down below bronze. Oh. It was below commercial quality. Oh, no. So he had to say something. Oh. So he's got up. And, I just, I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't understand these medical straps she has on her legs. <laughs> He'd never seen a suspender belt in his life. Oh. <laughs> well, he'd been photographing pipes, pipes in New Gu Papua New Guinea. No one wanted to photograph his pipe <laughs> or touch and his pipe. He, for he, that he talked it down, talked it down a couple, because he was so high up in, he's always on executives and committees. Yeah. You know, a few of them dropped their scores and just brought me back to silver. Which I, I just thought. You don't know what a, a garter belt is. <laughs> Poor and Dibbles. then I didn't get care because it really it was just something. You I cried about it. You told so me. You didn't sleep that night. You were crying. It, I know that every time one of my images came up it. and it turned, the mm. whole crowd, because there's normally 50 to 100 people behind the judges watching, mm. and the whole crowd would go, oh, oh. <laughs> They'd make noises. Whenever one of the pictures came up, they made a noise. <laughs> they made noises. Yeah, I think lots ran out crying and they sat in the toilet for a while rocking. No. But, 
Anyway, <laughs> at, the, at the end of the, uh, that night, I'm at home and I get a phone <laughs> call. <laughs> and <laughs> the phone call is this particular judge. And he's rung up and said, I know what a guard about his name. <laughs> no, no, we didn't even go to it. He <laughs> rang up and said, I've seen you around the organisation and I never knew what you did or how you did, you know, what you did about it. And there was four images that the whole crowd just made a noise every time. I've realised every one of those were your images. Mm. And I talked down one of your images and I feel so bad now because I didn't know that that was actual clothing. I thought it was some <laughs> medical thing. We were trying to be like quirky with some girl in lingerie wearing some medical aid. <laughs> so he was trying to see it's like a helmet. New even though he didn't know who helmet new was. Yeah. And he was so embarrassed. He Aww. said, I wish I didn't talk. And I said, no, it shouldn't be if you know me or you, because he didn't really know me. Yeah. I said, it shouldn't be that. And he goes, we need more photographers. Your work is just so different to everybody else on here. That's why everybody made a noise. It was like, oh, what just hit us in the face? Yeah, it wasn't nice. I don't know what the end of this, where I was going. I've got no idea. <laughs> why did I start on this? There was some reason I started on this. Oh, you did it again. You destroyed me completely. How did I destroy you? you were... Well, I can't remember my ending. There was an ending to this. Well, I don't anyway, know. Anyway, he, he did, he has, oh, I remembered. <laughs> Dandruff. <Full circle. laughs> now I remember. So, <laughs> unfortunately, he has passed, but he's quite old even Did he have dandruff too? He had really bad dandruff. Oh, okay. He'd always wear black suits. Right. And it was like this, someone had gone over him like a cake and sprinkled icing sugar over him. And it was always, and it always, all I could, when I was talking to her, all I could look at all the flakes. And, oh, that's a big flake there. And I'd be looking, and I'd not even listen to what he was saying because I was too interested in seeing what the biggest flake was. And then oh. we were on a workshop recently and somebody else was wearing dark shirts and also had dandruff oh, problems. Was it you? No, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. No, I'm oh. not going to mention that. He's a very, very nice guy. Oh. I'll tell you after. No, I can't No, I don't. No, I don't, well, I'm not asking you to mention no. I was yeah, just hanging shit you on never, you. You would have never known this. But because no, because of, I don't even... You, or you like... I'll, it we'll stands be, out so much Like, we'll be filming me. and you'll wear a black shirt and then, like, you... Afterwards, you'll be like, "Oh, Beck, like, why didn't you tell me?" I'm like, "Well, I didn't. I didn't notice it. Like, it doesn't." Yeah, be sure you're used to wearing clothes. <laughs> I'm always covered <laughs> in cat hair. Then have a snow hair. fountain dumped on you in ca a cat hair fountain. I've got the best thing at home for because the, the couch just gets because I've got a great. I wonder where you got that from. The couch. No, the thing at home. The thing. Yeah. Where did we get that thing from? I think I saw it in a Facebook ad. I, maybe you purchased maybe it. Maybe I found it on a Facebook ad and purchased sure? two. One for you and one for me. I thought I found it. Anyway. That's Thank got you. the lint thing. and it's yeah. Got the, yeah, but it also has a scraper for your couch. No, it's only just it's just a scraper for the couch. But you didn't get, get the... Because it came with the lint... Do you know, like that. the little balls? Takes the balls off your jumpers? I didn't get that. I've just got the... Oh, maybe I stole that out of yours. I've just got oh, no, the... I most likely gave you that one because we don't have... Our dogs don't drop hair. Mm. Well, I You've that thing it. for the couch. Oh, it's such a lifesaver. But so why don't you use it on? It your doesn't clothes? work on clothes. It's so annoying. It doesn't even work. So my country road bag, because my I don't know I don't know what it is with my cats. They like to sleep on bags. They like, take after their <laughs> mother. <laughs> I was like, Jared, we've got a... In that a... thing you sent me, sorry, that thing you sent me last night <laughs> with a person turning up covered in bruises, bruises, not knowing how they got it, then it backlashes through what they did. That's you. I know. Like, as soon as you sent through, I said, yeah, back, that's you every friggin' morning. I know. You wake I'm... up with bruises I'm and like, don't know don't, how they got it. I don't know. I don't know what happened there. We need to put a GoPro on your head. No, we don't. Yeah, so we can record how you got your bruises. I don't need to know. Anyway, um, Anyway. Um, I just killed the... you. My country road bag, which is black, because pretty much everything I own is black. My cat. Burberry's not black. I said pretty much everything I own. You know you can buy a black Burberry. Ooh. But the D-ring <laughs> would be lost in your bag. <laughs> and I know Burberry needs to be that camel no, colour. Yeah. It needs to be that and it has to have tart inside. Yeah, Although does. I did see a high-end Burberry at F1. Oh. 
It was satin red inside. Ooh. It was very cool. That's very. That'd be a really nice pair with some Louboutins it with the red on It was there. very cool. I don't. It was a celeb wearing them. I don't oh. know who. Fancy. But it was with a couple of the American celebs that had gone to not to wherever their last race was, which Isn't it Vegas. No, no, the last one just happened this weekend. Oh, I don't know. I don't follow. It. <laughs> what? I don't. I don't so your I... snotty nose, like. It's not your nose, I'm just saying it's not to my palate. Not to my palate. And no. you try and make me watch Drag Race and MGK. I try and make you watch Drag Race? I... Oh, some, I saw something about Drag. It's, you've been watching, there's some big thing that happened. Uh, I think I've got an episode of the UK one to watch. Something really big happened. Like, oh, it made news big happen. Oh. Yeah, I should have saved it for you, but I, I didn't. Don't know. No, I've been re-watching old seasons because it's... Because you re-watch everything because you know <laughs> it's going to be good. I'm not going to risk it being bad. What? So I'll just re-watch Harry <laughs> Potter for the 400th time. I like the older seasons of Drag Race because it, was, it wasn't RuPaul's best friend race back then. It was actually like... Wow. Whereas now everyone's like... So has like, Drag Race gone woke race? Yes. Now everyone's like... They all sit there when they're doing their makeup and they all talk about their past trauma and things that make them sad and they all get along and they're friends. Whereas they used to fight like cat and dog. They used to oh, be... Oh, you're not allowed to anymore. It's... Someone I want, might top themselves if they saw that. I want to see the drama. <laughs> <laughs> I... I like drama when it doesn't involve me. <laughs> drama that involves me, absolutely not. Not for me. No, thank you. Somebody else's drama? Hell yes. Sign me up. Give me front row seats. So we're most likely going to get cancelled now. Why? For what I'm going to say. No, don't cancel us, please. Don't? No, I think I, think I need to say it. Oh, God. Sorry? Oh, God, I'm scared. Go on. You want to... All right, so... No, I think Beck will back me up on this, so we'll both get cancelled on this. <laughs> I'm scared. So uh, we're working away and Beck's doing her normal thing, just searching through social media while I'm carrying the fort. And she's <laughs> and then something came up and there's a thing I used to hang out for every year was the Victoria's Secret show coming up to November, December. It would yes. always be round about lead up to Christmas so then their sales would go off. And I mentioned... I don't know what it was. It came down to, oh, what, when's Victoria's Secret show going to no, be? No, I, I ran in, I can't remember what it was. I was doing, I was, I was working. I'm like, it's something I don't work. I was working. And there was something that triggered something in my brain that I was like. Oh, uh, you smelt wine. Because <laughs> <laughs> I remember when they the announced. The one that sell happened to be at the right place <laughs> at the right time. The, the, <laughs> it was bouncing around like the DVD symbol and it finally hit that corner and everyone cheered. That's what happened. It, but no, I remembered a few months ago when they announced that they were going to do this the tour documentary fashion show thing. And oh, they so announced the, who the models so were going to be. it wasn't just a show live. No. It was a tour documentary. It's a documentary. It, they haven't watched, remember watching the trailer? It's part documentary, part fashion show. So it's got interviews and stuff and it's... See, I was waiting for the show. That's why I said, this yeah, is weird. I follow not. all of these models, like Adrian Lima, Emrata. There's lots of models that were in some of the pictures we saw in America. And I follow them. I not, did not see a single picture come up in any of their feeds. But it's, then, a it's like, it's, so it's part... So like, they've, they've copied what Drive to Survive did with F1, tried to make some type of series out of... Well, it's just one. It's a one-off. It's not a series. But oh, so it's just a one show. It's not like yeah. a, here's part one, part... It wasn't yeah. New York, London. No, no, but they had designers from four different places. Designers? Isn't it yeah. Victoria's Secret? No, the designers that designed the the lingerie were from four different places. Yeah. Oh, something yeah. like that. I don't know. I haven't seen it. Well, isn't it sort of South China, West China and North China? <laughs> <laughs> so it, their stuff is made in... There's... Sorry, I designers. Don't, they don't exist. There are very few exist in the world. Oh, I swear it was something like that. And then um, it looked like, from just the trailer that I watched, it looked like they had. Remember the Savage Fenty Rihanna yeah. one? It looked like it was kind of partially like that. Like it was like of them walking through houses and stuff. And then it also had looked like they had interviews and stuff with people. So. I don't know, but it had really bad It was reviews. so big, neither Beck or I'd heard it had even been on in September, wasn't it? September. Not one of... See, I... Re, because I'm still... And Victoria's Secret Fashion Show... Sorry, I just smacked my microphone. 
That was my Super Bowl. Like I used to, <laughs> like, I swear well, to God. Um, I used to love watching it for me, the walk. Me too. You'd get Nomi Cam, we'd get the really good walkers in. Uh, <laughs> Gigi would walk out mm -hmm. and I'd just go, but, uh, No, but what's I, like, the, the fashion it was in, it was nothing was for sale. It might have been a G string, it was the only thing on oh, Victoria's yeah. Secret. Oh, yeah, and then the fantasy the rest wings. Was the fan yeah. but I didn't care about that. It was I loved the power of the models and their struts. Yeah, let me check. Just it's check. very windy now. Oh, we're yeah. getting blown away. I'm just checking where on still, yeah. Just checking. It what? says zero minutes, so, but we're recording. Oh, does that mean it'll go to B? It should go to the other. I hope so. Is the battery charged? Like, what's the battery saying? Battery. Battery's on 72. Yeah, but what's the battery? And it's signing the... Oh, it says oh record. My... Yeah, it's all right. That's should the, be fine. The sign in the middle of the battery completely different. It's saying so. record. It'll bounce. Okay. You didn't check the... So this Christmas, I'm doing a big sale of lots of my gear I'm selling, and Beck, <laughs> we're going to start taking some um, bids on Beck. <laughs> now we started. I'll pay you a thousand dollars to take. <laughs> what does that mean? No, I just want an, a real assistant. I am. Oh my god! You know, an assistant that tastes like a real assistant. <laughs> that was a chocolate. What was it? No, it was milk. I just want milk, milk that oh, tastes milk, like that tastes milk. milk. <laughs> I want an assistant that's just like an assistant. I am. I am. <laughs> I, am. <laughs> I haven't made you scared about your job in ages. It's got to be at least two months since I've told no, you about stuff I've been doing behind your back. <laughs> <laughs> I can't afford Botox. I have a wedding to pay for. Oh, that's right. <laughs> anyway. What would you say? You can't afford Botox. <laughs> yeah. You're not getting Botox. If you get Botox, you're fine. Well, if you keep stressing me out, I'm going to need it. Don't lift your eyebrows. No, don't, don't stress me Don't lift your eyebrows. <laughs> Stop doing a pug face. It's the not only... can't help if I have a round face. No, but pugs get those creases there. Yeah, and you tell me all the time I look like a pug. <laughs> so, well, there's always a thing that people look like their pets. I, oh, yeah, I used to have a pug. <laughs> yes, you used to have a pug. <laughs> Well, it's really funny, there's this really cool guy that I grew up with and someone said to me, what, what dog do you reckon he has? <laughs> and he, I don't know, it looks a little bit like a pug and he goes, he's got four of them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, jumping back though, because I, I think oh, I know sorry. where you were going with your VS. Oh, yes, Your sorry. VS, BS. <laughs> I, I think... And I've seen some companies starting to do it now and I'm seeing a lot of backlash of what's happening in other countries in the world and the way they've voted a little bit. Mm. They're a bit over this whole... Um, what's the right word with that? See, I don't want to sound nasty because it's not meant that way. It's this whole... You should be able to employ the best person for the job, mm. not the person that makes you be able to write, I'm inclusive, look, I employed her. <laughs> yeah. That to me is not a good business and it's not how the world should work. Yeah. And I, myself, when I had, many years ago and I had uh, my wholesale nursery, I employed four people with disabilities and they were employed because they were the best people to do that job by far. I, did, I d could employ anybody else, they would not do it, but anybody that was uh, on the spectrum slightly did it perfect. Mm. Like never ever had a problem. It could be 38 degrees Celsius, I don't know in Fahrenheit, or it could be... You know, yeah, it's nearly zero, 100. Zero. And they would Which still do the job exactly the same, day in, day out, never miss a thing, because mm. the way they were was so anal retentive about this one, one, two, three, this one, one, two, three, this yeah. one. And they would do it all day long and have a great day. Whereas if you gave it to someone like me, I'd be, if you give me, this is say, I was, had a wholesale nursery market and there was automatically sprinklers running, but we would do the top up in the middle of the day because clients were there, we couldn't run sprinklers. Um, they would just do the top up and it was basically three seconds in every single pot in the entire five acres. Yeah. 
And these kids, like, they got paid the same wage as anybody else that worked just in our grounds crew, which was minimum wage plus 20%. So they were paid exactly the same. They, they were the best workers. It wasn't me trying to be inclusive. I employed the best people for that job. Yeah. I don't like the fact that companies are now, we're going to have a token Brazilian person. Now we're going to have a token Chinese person. Yeah. We're going to have a token dwarf. We're now going to have a token blind person. That is not the best thing for them or the company. No, These just... people have been employed because, because they have got something that they're saying is not normal. Yeah, and if anything, it's kind of going... It's, it's like going, going against... Way. Yeah, it's going against... You've only like... got a job because you're blind. Yeah. And I think that's wrong. I think... And it, and it, it leads yeah. the wrong story for everything. Like, Darwin's theory of evolution was... Like, if Darwin's theory of evolution kicked in full on today, I would say maybe 60% of humans would die. Mm. because we've been propped up by other things because we aren't the strongest, we're not the fittest, we're not mentally strong, we're not physically mm. strong. No, so if we were thrown into a jungle, the what amount of us, mean? like, you would die in a second. I, would, I am not, I am not mentally so or physically quick. strong and I couldn't you, kill anything. You couldn't kill anything, you couldn't drink <laughs> dirty water. No. Yeah, an animal come up, oh, pretty cool, <laughs> you're dead. <laughs> I would not last a second. <laughs> Absolutely not. It's like a lot of like the so if you're talking like say wolf packs or you know packs of dogs and things like that, the king of it is the first one that gets to eat out the anus and gets to eat the liver and ki- they're the ones that get the strongest because they're eating the most nutrient rich part. The butthole. Yeah, that they eat through the butthole to get to things like kidney, liver, stomach, and then they leave all the meat that we <laughs> leave would not. The butthole for <laughs> <laughs> well, they know you're not going to eat it. You're just going to go, where's I fill it, please? I just have the little bit of no nutrient piece of meat that I'm going to die. <laughs> no fat news. Like, where is the chicken breast and the yeah. I fill it? <laughs> please and thank you. And can you cook it for me? <laughs> and have you got a red wine that I can drink with it? Yep. <laughs> No, but I get, I feeling, I'm, I am starting to see a little bit. A lot of people are, see, I've never shut my mouth. You will keep telling me to shut up. When? No, just about me, general. Oh, Peter's what? raving again. What? You do. Yeah, I see you roll your eyes. Oh, Peter's mm. going again. <laughs> no, sometimes, no, just because it's sometimes I've heard the same conversation like three times in a week, but you're having it. I hear that from you every day. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, oh, we're on this tangent again. I've heard this. This is the third time I've heard this one this week. So <laughs> that's why I'm just like, oh, okay. And then, no. but it's, it's good though because I know how long I have until. Oh, so you know how long you can sit on social media and look at drag race yep. stuff. Anyway, no, I'm and I'm something, and I'm, so people got me wrong. I'm not a fan of Elon Musk. I just do really, really appreciate that he threw away what forty billion dollars on Twitter. Mm. I don't know if you'll ever make that money back or that, but the principle behind it was to have something that was did, supposedly doesn't have an agenda behind it. And if you're left or far right, le- left or far right, unless you say something like hate speech, he's going to leave you a comment alone and not hide it. Whereas I definitely see it hap- happening on other sides. What you've seen it yourself on our Instagram. If there seems to be a little bit too much skin, but we never, mm. we don't do those tiny little people puts like a, a grain of rice on a nipple and say, I've, I've censored this. <laughs> yeah. Because I won't post those pictures that were never made for Twitter, I was for Insta and that. I'm <laughs> very much me. about that they're sort of like, oh, we're not going to tell you with it. We're going to secretly do this behind your back. Yeah, it's bullshit. And if you don't have the balls to say it to my face, mm. Grow, right. some, grow some bigger balls. Grow some bigger balls. But I do like go work, go broke, and more and more companies without knowing it, feeling it. And just, I know I had, we have a chain, we, unfortunately in Australia, we have, we're not a big population, so it didn't take big corporation much time to work out that we can really monopolise. So when it comes to things like fruit, veggies, meat, and groceries, 
we've pretty much got two major chains and two smaller chains, and mm. that's it. Yeah. Whereas you go to somewhere like Paris and like most countries, there's this independent supermarket, this independent like yeah. store. Like every corner's got something, and if they don't stock something, you go to this one. But what these chains did is they just went out there and made everything so. Nearly knocked it. You nearly knocked it. Sacrilege. Sacrilege. Oh yeah, it would have gone over my keyboard. Maybe no, I need I to put my back it. there and like lubricate it, it so it opens. Nearly knocked it this way. It would have gone under floor. Oh. So it would have been like Port Douglas breaking more glasses. Continues. Continues. Anyway, so our change calls and Ooh, they nice. used to call it, be called Safeway. Imagine, Jared's, I think, Jared, is it Jared that still calls it Safeway? I every, every now I still mix it up. Imagine having a chain store called Safeway. Someone I know still calls it Safeway and they refuse to call it Woolies. And I'm like, it's Woolies. Well, it's, not, it's Woolworths. It's not Woolies. Woolies is a We're Australian. Shortened... We shorten everything. <laughs> yeah, I know, Rebecca. You've shortened to Beck. I mean, stop reminding everyone of my full name. All right, Rebecca, uh, Bex. No, just Beck. Well, I shortened it to Bex. Just Beck. Becky. No, <laughs> absolutely not. Your Rebecca loves different so versions of her name. Bexter. She's really into Bexter. <laughs> it is funny how many people <laughs> call you Becky and I see hey, the cringe. Hey, Becky. And in America, they call... Well, America is more Becca. Becca. But Becca is like my private personal email does have Becca in it. So that, I'm fine with Becca. When I was a kid, because um, where I grew up in Saudi, um, there's a lot of American expats there. So I grew up with a lot of American expats. And so is it like Do It Like Becca? What? Wasn't there a movie called Do It Like Becca? You think you have Bend It Like Beckham? Oh, Becca. Yeah, oh, it's close. That's so a British... Does anyone call you Beckham? Beckham, no, <laughs> because I'm not a so, footballer. So you don't, you don't kick balls around? No. <laughs> I mean, Jared reckons you kick his balls pretty hard, but... <laughs> so I used to be a Becca, so I don't mind Becca. That's okay, I can tolerate that. I don't like that. Becca. I prefer Kate. I can tolerate it, but I much just prefer... Uh, just Beck. Just Beck's fine. Just Beck. Just Beck. Anyway, where, did, where were we talking about before I just where, lodged where, you? you? And you have a go at me, he's. Look at you. Me, he's. Me, he's. Yeah, well, go on. I completely <laughs> lost it. Frickin'. <laughs> it's so good to get payback. But I don't do this you to you. Do you do, do, do it to me all, all day, every day. You do it to yourself. You just, it's like you're fidgeting. It's, you just, da, 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 I can't get it to open. Hey, fidgeting. What? The last podcast. Can anybody who's on YouTube watch Beck fidgets? And she's got did. oh four hours. To, did I do this before or did I do it before? That's all right. This will tell us when we started. Forty-three minutes. Twelve minutes to go. I'll tell it to shut up. Uh, I won't tell we... you why my alarm's going off ten minutes early because uh, an assistant didn't assist. Uh, um, now you've, I've lost my... F- Look what you did to me. Go at me. Go at me. <laughs> I did check it. You check it. Ten minutes too late. But it's, it's all right. The first take was boring anyway. So it was just you playing with your camera. I'll go back to playing. Oh, yeah, no, I remember where <laughs> I was at. So if you look at the last podcast, you'll see <laughs> Miss Becker... <laughs> You said you like Becca. I said I can tolerate it. Tolerate it. I don't like it. I She's sitting it. there with this on her knees doing this and it's going crackle, crackle, crackle. Oh, yes, and my, my, you might need to watch it. It's some pretty funny, stupid things you did in that. Which one was it? The last one. On the beach? No, that's like three ago. You have no idea what you do from day to day, do you? Yeah. What? But I just, because we're, we're like, I've, we're far ahead with the... No, we're not. We're... You're scratching your head. What was the last one? Oh, there's been two since the beach. Oh, and then where was the pool? So yes. was it the pool one? No. I want to say, there's been two since the beach. Oh, but that one's not out yet, though. That'll be out on this Friday. They don't know that until oh, you just opened your mouth. They thought that we were on the same week. Well, well I'm done. So... Giving away our secrets. I'm. So... Don't ask me to. Sorry, we are running. I tried to make it so 
Don't give me eyes. You're the blabbermouth. Now I know where Gail got it from. Oh, oh my, my God. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at her face change. This, so how's, you know, how's Gail's wedding going? <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, the, just because we've got Christmas coming up, we want to keep the podcast every single week. We have to sneak a little bit ahead. Yes. And the one, and I'm giving away things. So today is a Wednesday. Mm. We're Wednesday week before this will come up. Yeah. So we had the other one we did when we did your bag. Oh, my bag, yeah. Your bag. So it's the bag one. Oh, that's right. After we finished with your bag, you got so fidgety. Oh, because you kept telling me it was boring and I felt awkward. No, this was after you bored the world with your bag. Well, I felt awkward. Awkward. Turtle. Sorry, you're the one who was playing with the sand on the earth. <laughs> Nothing like you with your sand I was only on the playing with the sand. Beach. Because I know it was pissing, it was pissing me off. Me off. I was <laughs> you, you didn't even see. I was just going. Like, <laughs> whenever you didn't look, I flicked sand on you. So you was pissing yeah, you off. I'm yelling at you. And you look down and see. Well, he's just doing this. Maybe the wind's just blowing it. I said to you, I was like, stop One doing this. One hour straight flicking sand on you. And I told I was like, stop doing this because it's Aren't getting on me. you glad I wasn't home. your brother? Imagine me be your brother. Oh, my gosh. No wonder your <laughs> sister is so anxious. <laughs> hey, my sister and I are best friends. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't mean you wouldn't have picked on her. Oh, yeah, well, we were like, kill. Like, even up till about 18. Oh, my God. It was like, no. She was... I was into metal and she was into Bay City Rollers. Yeah. Yeah. But she'd still turn up at places. Yeah. So we, there was a thing called the North Ringwood Dance and there'd always be um, two or three bands on. We'd, there was, this was before discos and DJs. Before, back in no the Stone so, Ages, back in your day. No, back in the fun day. So you, you turn and it was a, like a private thing. It was just held in like a scouts hall. So it's just a hall. In North Ringwood. North, yeah, North Ringwood, Scouts Hall. That's where we used to hold it. Can't picture where it It would be once a month. And it would be called the North Ringwood Dance. It was on a Saturday night. And you'd most likely get 200 people jam themselves into a, like a basketball court. And you'd get three really shitty local bands play. Would you and pash the, with a girl? The, oh, of course you did. <laughs> you might, it, it, your aim was to pash with three different girls. <laughs> so it was like vapes, you got different flavours. <laughs> But now Sounds like blue light disco, but before disco. Way before disco. Right. Disco didn't even exist. Any. Like Saturday Night Fever hadn't even come. Oh, I'm wow. talking early, uh, mid 70s. So, oh. so 74, 75, 76. Right. Mm. So, and it was really cool. Was, there'd always be one really cool band, and we always hung up if they were going to be playing. If they didn't, they played at uh, Mitchum. We'd all head to Mitchum instead, catch a train and get, go to Mitchum, and. All of a sudden, my freaking stupid bitch of a sister was turning up. And, and what are you doing here, freaking nightmare? <laughs> Although I didn't treat her. She was like the one who nasty on me. I didn't. Then all of a sudden, I say, oh, you're dating this long-haired git. And <laughs> this guy looked like, if you haven't ever seen the young ones, look up the young ones. Have you ever seen the young ones? I don't know. You don't know. I don't think so. You don't think so. It was four university students and they were four right. completely different and it's a comedy show. It's English, so you'd hate it. I but wouldn't hate it. I love Skins. That was British. So it's not a comedy. Skins, nothing like <laughs> It's British? <laughs> I love oh, that show. My God. What? Yeah, but you, you can't watch Lock Stock or Snatch or any of those. I liked Train Spotting. That's British, isn't I it? <laughs> I, want you to, I want you to see Snatch. Maybe I'm going to make you watch Snatch. Snatch. It's got Brad Pitt in it. Ooh. It's really cool. It's like gangster, British gangster. The Russian. There's not really like into gangsters. No, but this is so funny. I'm it's way too good. white to be into You're gangster. Too, oh, they're all white in this movie. I <laughs> know, oh, there's a few blacks. But, well, English are half a quarter black or whatever. But regardless of that, oh, you've lost me again. Yeah, so... <laughs> My sister's first serious boyfriend was like Neil out of the Young Ones, which is someone like six foot tall, six foot two tall, mm. hair a skinny rake and hair that came halfway down his leg, dead straight. Interesting. We never put it up. We'd always just leave it there and just do this, mm. and it would ripple. 
It was always dead straight, it was like the most perfect, like Marsha Brady type hair. It was just always perfect. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. And he turned out to be a complete idiot, but... Um, and because his best mate was in one of the bands, he was always at North Ring Dance, and then... My sister cracked it because our band started doing the North Ringwood dance. We only did it twice and it was all like, there's no money here. I was like, we'd go out with 25 bucks for the whole band and go, we can play at the Croydon and end up with $200 for the Don't band. Don't spend Why? it all at once. Don't spend it. <laughs> so I think we did North Ringwood twice. Mm. Um, we did the, you know the church near Ringwood Station? Up on the hill, the yeah, other yeah, side. Yeah. We, we did that with the new band. That was the first, that was Joe Cool and the Ice Cubes. Lead singer's Joe. Interesting choice the of very, name. The very first night they sacked the bass player, like at the end of the night, because he was very well endowed and he wore very, very, very tight <laughs> pants and you saw the slug go to his knee. So it was like a pair of coconuts. To his knee? It was a, like a pair of coconuts and a friggin' salami. No. As a Serious. Mm. He was massive. No. I'm not joking. It might never have risen, but it was there. Would you like his address, would you? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's I can't terrifying. remember his name, but on stage, all he was trying to do was, like, thrust his donger at the girls because I think most his girls salami. were running away thinking, oh, that's worse than birth. Yes, that's what I was like, that's terrifying. <laughs> and so they sacked him at the end of the night, so mm. we're having a beer out the back and in the... The, one of the priests from the church came in and saw us drinking out the back and we were in trouble. But You're going to hell now. They were all, they were all fine. They were all over 18. I was like 15. Oh. I was, and they just promoted me. Oh, you used to play violin, didn't you? I said, yeah. Well, violin and bass guitar have both got four strings. <laughs> um, because we don't really have to have a piano mm -hmm. player because we want to go more clean, because back then we were doing a bit of like Chuck Berry and stuff like that. Mm. I don't even know who Chuck Berry is. I you? think I do. I know the name. Yes. I know you tell people all the time that you used to take photos of Chuck Berry. No, only one concert. He dragged me on stage. Oh. I know you the know name. The, you know the name. I'll show you a Chuck Berry film clip. I think I... Yeah, OK. Yeah. All right. So anyway, we so more playing like rock and roll, like old-fashioned rock and roll. No, rock and roll. Like, no, no, way before that. Um, have you ever heard of Bill Haley in the Comets? One o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock rock. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit. Um, with the piano and um, all of those, like, more like that Elvis. rock. Like Elvis. We never did a single Elvis song, though. No. But like... Although, I can't, Silvio, Silvio was the name of the guy. He would have loved to have done Elvis. He would have thrusted his freaking Oh, my song. God. <laughs> Back, back in those days, the guys that wore Fabergé jeans, which were girls' jeans, which were so tight. Fabergé? Fabergé. And it was big, so tight, they could they would put so uh, socks in their legs. To, no, I'm serious. This was... Have a look at... All right, to have a look at early Akadaka. ACDC, by the way. Akadaka is what Australia call them. The rest of the world is That's what you call them. No, Akadaka. Sorry. You were around the 70s, they were Akadaka. They were never anything other than Akadaka. Right. Have a look at the, there's one in, there's one where they played on the back of a ute driving through the city, I think it was. It yeah, had the bagpipes, I can't remember the name of the song. It's a long way to the shop if you want, want a sausage, sausage roll. roll. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Look at Bon Scott, you'll see his two gonads mm. sitting in there and he's slowly sitting in the pipe. He, he, he was wearing Fabergés. I want to go looking for this. <laughs> I bet you'll search. <laughs> as soon as we turn this off, she will go. Get home and Chara's going to be like, what are you looking at? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm just looking at Akadaka. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just looking at ACDC fan. <laughs> Jokes. Jokes, Joys. But yeah, so back then it was all about the tight pants and the, how big the bulge was and how long the bulge and how big and how but everywhere. Speaking of this though, like, and... The girls used to wear other things that ended up giving them the biggest camel toes <laughs> in the world. And they always did it with white slacks. The things like, things that, I've really noticed it recently as well. Do Americans well. know what camel toe is? Yes, everyone knows what a camel toe is. You sure? Yeah. And guys got moose knuckles. 
guy. Guys get moose knuckles. Oh, moose knuckles. Yeah, it's moose knuckle and camel toe. Oh. So, yeah. but no, I've noticed with like, especially recently because now I'm, I'm old now. So you get bigger camel toes? No, uh, I haven't <laughs> so finished yet. So the older yet. you get, the bigger the I'm toe? Finished yet. <laughs> so the fashion that when I was, when I was a kid that was in fashion and then went out of fashion and wasn't cool, like early 2000s fashion, that's now coming back in. And I'm like. Uh, <sighs> like that was ugly fashion. I know, but it's like, it's coming back in and I'm like. Well, to give you an idea, for give everyone an idea of my age, when my wife's 18th birthday, she bought some grease stretch pants. Oh. You know the ones that I think so. Sandy wore yeah. with John Travolta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the black <laughs> she had that. That was what she wore on her birthday. Oh my God bless her. But that was the era we were that talking. Was, yeah. Well, like I, I remember when I can't remember when it was, but I feel like something like '80s came back in, and everyone was like, "I can't believe the '80s is back," and now I'm like, "I can't believe the early 2000s is back." Like this is terrifying. But it's funny how, like, yeah, we went from like '70s was all about tight pants, and then our '90s was all baggy pants. But then I feel like tight pants came back in, and now, no, but, when but now baggy pants are coming back. When I was in LA, quite a few stores had hipster flares. Yeah, like proper fl- hipster flares. So they came only they- came just. Up that's, to that bone. That's early 2000s. No, but no, that's... I know it was originally 70s, but that's what I'm saying. 60s, 70s. It, it was 60s, 70s. And yeah, then... Led Zeppelin people. And it would be tight to here, then yeah. flare from... Whereas, yeah, that was big in 60s, 70s, and then it went out of fashion, and then early 2000s it came back in, and then it went out of fashion, but now it's coming back Yeah, again. 60s, 70s of that. And then when Akadak Renee, they went to the Fabergé, which was still tight on top, but they Fabergé. stayed pencil tight the whole way. Like the mm-hmm. girls... Whenever Shree and I went out, she would lay on her bed on her back. With a coat hanger? Suck her gut. And I had the go- coat hanger in the zip, trying to pull it up so she could do up her pants. When I and I will... said, what happens when you go to the toilet? I won't. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I just won't drink and then don't need to go to the toilet because I'll never get these done back up again. When I was an emo child, still am, never recovered from that, um, I used to put my jeans in the fridge to shrink them down and make them sign up. <laughs> so they'd be dead type like, oh, and I was so skinny. No, well, see, the, the girls back then, what the thought is if they put their dryers on the super hottest watch, they would shrink, it would shrink it, and it did shrink till they couldn't get in them. Yeah. They couldn't even get them up the thighs. No, I, I find the, the fridge, I remember I told one of my ex-boyfriends about the, the fridge technique, and he did it, and he was like, holy shit. It's just better because he, he... He liked the cool balls, was it? Uh, well, I think he liked the cool balls. Now, so. Well, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you froze his balls. He's got he, nowhere else to go. He is gay now. <laughs> so it was really awkward when I tell people that. I'm like, oh, my ex, he's gay now. They're like, what did you do to him? Yeah, it's like... <laughs> it wasn't it's me. Like, you dated someone Nikki, after me. Nikki and Muddle. <laughs> I used to shoot, dated my son for a month, and then my son went to okay. <laughs> Nikki. What did you do? Yeah. <laughs> no, he dated someone after me. It wasn't me, I promise. But it's just funny when he's like... But is, this a, is this a guy we met in the pub in yeah. Canberra? Yeah. He felt very awkward that oh, yeah. night. I'm sure he's just going to be an awkward person. Oh, is he? Yeah. But it's always funny if I'm talking, if I'm telling my friends a story, I'll be like, oh, and yeah, my gay ex-boyfriend. They're like, I'm like what? <laughs> That's a really weird thing to say, but hmm. it's funny. Funny. It is funny. It is funny. Anyway, we can't go any longer because Beck has got something on tonight. What do you got on tonight? I have to go get hair ripped out of my body. Oh, it's only a wax. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose. What? Nothing. I've got a little mustachi coming and I need it. My arms are a bit hairy as well, so I need to go get... No, someone thinks, what was it, two episodes ago with me? What? That was on a podcast. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Well, you're sitting like this and the sun was coming this way and there's these tiny little straight hairs. That was you. That was you hanging shit on me. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm going to go get my arm hair waxed. No, but it wasn't... It was actually really cute. They were all just doing this, this little dance. Really cute. Don't look at my mustache. I hadn't noticed it till you pointed it out. 
I, you know I've told every model in the world, never tell the client your faults because we didn't see it till you... I did not even notice Mustacha. Oh, my God. Are you checking out my Mustacha <laughs> You went to a wedding like that, did you? That was a week ago. It's, it was... Has <laughs> grown up? Or you, you feed it with a lot of bullshit. Now it's grown. <laughs> That's maybe what you've done. <laughs> You're nasty. You're nasty. Nasty pasty. All right, well, enjoy your week, guys. We will see you again. Same time, same place. Next week. No, now they don't trust us. You've given what? away us trying to catch up a bit for Christmas while you'll be on maternity leave for another... Yeah, she's going on maternity leave again. <laughs> we were going to do it, but we, we could have done it, but we really couldn't be effed. Mm -hmm. um, my... Daughter had a gorgeous little girl while we were away, and she's only like two or three months old, and she has this biggest <laughs> head of black hair. And we're going to start off a podcast with Beck breastfeeding her. I'm going to breastfeed her. <laughs> Come on. I oh, know she would have starved any. to death. <laughs> I don't think the baby wants to eat silicone. No, but pretend. <laughs> Anyway, whatever, you're holding it then. You, I'll we, just you hold it. it. I'm not, I'm just... Or changing its nappy. Also. Absolutely. I've never changed a nappy in my life and... Oh, sorry. And you never will. No. So does Jared know that he is going to have to change... Oh, Jared's don't. I know what Jared's like. He's like, I'll have to do it. I'll do it when it's my own, if I have my own. I can already see you now. You're going to borrow the pressure cleaner from out the back. <laughs> Sit the baby. No, you'll stand here and go. That sounds like a good idea, actually. I'm going to be the greatest mother. Yes, I know. That's why. I... <laughs> bottle, <laughs> bottle for baby, bottle for mum. No, bottle, <laughs> <laughs> bottle for baby, bottle. No, for mom. no, it'll be baby on boob, bottle on mum. You're going to feed it filtered. Oh, I know. You can't do that. And also, I spent money on these. I don't know if I want them to sag. They're going to sag anyway. They're going to fill with milk. Mm. Lame. That's right. But it won't fully sag. What's going to happen, the weight is just going to pull them out here, right? And while, you, while you've got milk in here, they're going to come down like this. Once you lose milk, they'll flatten out here, but there'll still be a lump down there. A footy sock full of sand. Yeah, a footy sock. <laughs> sock full of sand. Yuck. Don't you like the ideas of you, you never have to worry about your nipples coming out your T-shirts anymore? <laughs> They'll come out the bottom of my crop tops. <laughs> They'll hang out the bottom of your crop You can't wear... You can't wear freaking underboob shirts because it's going to be nothing but nipple. <laughs> then you could get David LaChapelle to shoot you. Oh, my God. <laughs> be up there with Paris Hilton. Oh, my queen. Oh, my queen. Anyway, we've raved on too much. And we will see you last week. See you.